In the previous screencast, I showed you how we can calculate the slope and intercept using the least squared method for simple linear regression. I also showed you how we can calculate standard error, and we can calculate the standard error of our coefficients for slope and intercept. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how we can use the standard errors of our slope and intercept to perform hypothesis tests on the slope and intercept for simple linear regression. Recall from the previous screencast that our standard error of the slope and intercept are given here, and I go over all of these different parameters in that previous screencast. These standard errors can be used to perform hypothesis tests and calculate confidence intervals on the slope and intercept. And in this screencast, I'm going to show you how we can perform hypothesis tests. The hypothesis tests that we're going to perform relate to whether or not the slope and intercept are close enough to zero such that we can just ignore that term. This is typically not done for the intercept, by the way. Typically, you will leave an intercept in the model regardless of whether or not it is significant. But other parameters, such as the slope here, if we create a 95% confidence interval about beta 1 and it includes zero, that means we can't rule out that this beta 1, the slope, could be zero. If the slope is zero, then we may as well just eliminate that term from the model. It has no bearing on the output of our model. So to test the slope, we're going to set up a hypothesis test. The null hypothesis is that the slope is equal to some value. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to choose that to be zero. If we do not accept the alternate hypothesis, then we can assume that the slope is not necessary in our model. In other words, the slope could be zero. You can also do a lower tailed test and a two tailed test for the slope. The test statistic is shown here. We take our beta one estimate. So beta one hat is estimated from our sample data and we subtract whatever we are hypothesizing in our null hypothesis. And again, many times that's just equal to zero. And we divide by the standard error of our slope. We reject the null hypothesis if our test statistic for this upper tail test is greater than T alpha with N minus two degrees of freedom. So this is very similar to some of the hypothesis tests that we've done previously. Note the N minus two because now our degrees of freedom are a little bit smaller because we've used up two degrees of freedom in calculating our estimates for beta naught and beta one. Again, the most common and important null hypothesis would be that the slope is equal to zero. This addresses the question, if we use the null hypothesis equal to zero, does X have an effect on Y? And there are parallel tests for beta naught. Let's continue our example from a previous screencast. Now our beta one is negative. Our alternate hypothesis is going to be that the slope is less than zero. So we're doing a lower tailed test. We can use this equation over here to calculate our test statistic. So I put in a test statistic here. This is just equal to our beta one and we're checking to see if it's equal to zero. So beta one naught is just zero. And then I can simply divide by the standard error of beta naught. And it's as simple as that. This means that our test statistic is negative 6.16. We test this against a negative T alpha with two degrees of freedom, T dot INV, and we're gonna use an alpha of 0.05, N minus two degrees of freedom. And when we do that, that's negative 2.015. The conclusion, because T naught for this lower tail test is way down in the tail, it's a lot less than our critical T alpha of negative 2.01, our conclusion is that we accept the alternate and the slope really is less than zero. So the slope is significant. If we go back to the regression output, you notice that the test statistic of negative 6.17 is exactly what we got using Excel. And now let's go ahead and calculate a p-value. And actually, I'm just gonna put a green highlight here because now we've calculated that. You could also do the same thing for the intercept. So I've shown you essentially how we can do that. Let's calculate the p-value. The p-value, remember, is the area in the tail to the left for a lower tail test of our test statistic with n minus two degrees of freedom. And we have to use cumulative and we get a p-value of about 0 0.0008. You notice that that's not quite what the regression output is providing. 
The regression output is always assuming a two-tailed distribution. So if we actually multiply this by two, two times that, we would get the same p-value, 0.0016, that the regression output is providing. And you can do the same thing for the intercept. So I've shown you how we can do all of these things now by using simple Excel formulas. If you wanted to perform a hypothesis test on the intercept, you would just replace the subscript 1 here with 0 for the intercept. Thanks for watching.